Cool beans. Hey everybody, my name is Stuart Cohen, aka Root Guru, aka Lover of Entrepreneurial Agents. There you go. I'm glad you're here today. We are about to begin a serious hour of business coaching. It's as close as you can possibly get, I think, to one-on-one -on -one business coaching with me, which I really don't do anymore. Why? Why not? Or why? Well, I wish I had enough time to do it. Because when you make a commitment to somebody to do one-on-one -on -one business coaching, it's either weekly, or it's every other week, or it's monthly, and I travel a lot. In fact, I head out tomorrow to Puerto Vallarta, to the Hyatt Ziva, and I'll be doing about eight and a half hours of group sales training for connection. Are any of you going to be there? So that's why I don't do it. So that's why I do these things. I do this Ask Stewart hour. And friends, if you're here for the first time, because we have a whole bunch of new members of Group Bootcamp, if you're here for the first time, go ahead and let me know. Type something in saying you're here for the first time. Also, if you're here as a guest, because at the last second I said, hey, why not? You want to taste? You want to see what we do here in Bootcamp? Come on in. So let me know that you're a guest. And basically, uh, there's no slides. You have the absolute pleasure of seeing this the whole time but you don't have to look you just have to listen and here's the deal if you have a question if you have an issue if you have a challenge now's the time to type it in because as soon as I start and I already have a list of stuff we get on a roll and then when the hour comes up it's over you see and and one other thing friends I don't care how specific your issue challenge question is. That's what, that's what coaching is all about. That's why I don't come prepared with slides. I'm not here to tell you what I think you need to know. I'm here to, to help you in the areas where you need it most. And it's not only about challenges, it's also about success stories. So if you had a win, if there's something on your heart, in your head, that you want to bring forward to, to give us some inspiration, something that you've done that, that was transformational to your business. Did you have a successful meeting? Did you send out a, a postcard to meet somebody new? Did you have a 15-minute meeting with somebody and you, you made a new friend? Now's the time to bring it. Okay, so as you're typing stuff in, uh, and remember, if you're a boot camper, Welcome back. It's so great to have you here. If you are our visitor, my guest for the day, let me know. Let your fingers do the typing. And um, if you're a brand new boot camper, let me know. I uh, A couple of things to let you know that if you have any information about GSSS2, Group Sales Success Summit 2, a particular speaker that, that you're still watching. You're going back, especially your boot campers, because in boot camp you have total access to GSSS2 and GSSS1. Let me know what's moving you. Let me know who you, who you listened to since we met last time, which was two weeks ago. Uh, like I said, I will be traveling my list of notes here. Uh, my goodness, from Wednesday to next Monday. And then uh, actually Dream Vacations, they just booked me to do their group training summit uh, in Fort Lauderdale in June. And then I'm going to be at Edge. I think some of you I'm going to see at Edge for Travel Leaders Network and got a lot of stuff going on this year. So excited. Uh, and that's it. OK, here we go. Let's just dig in here. Let me go take a look at the, co the uh, comments. One moment, please. Let me go with the questions. And while I'm looking at questions, I'm going to take a sip of my coffee which I just brewed using my handy dandy French press. Do you use a French press? Have you been to the Hyatt Ziva Puerto Vallarta to give me any recommendations? Some things I don't miss. I want to make sure I'm working my tail off. Sessie's in the house. Hello, Sessie, my friend Sessie. Sessie was one of my very first original coaching clients. She's a good friend and I owe you a focal because when you reached out to me, where I was I? I was someplace. I think it was in Cabo. Uh huh. One second. Mmm. Mmm. I grind the beans myself, ladies and gentlemen. I really enjoy 
uh, Karen said, you just sent me an email. But Karen, uh, we're, well, how am I going to check the email? We're here live. All right, I'll see if I can, if later, I'll see if I can check it real quick on my phone. Mitch says, good morning, Sir Stewart. Wow, I've been knighted. I am Sir Stewart. Looking forward to your wisdom. Me too. I have no idea what's coming out of this mouth today. Buffy is here as a guest. So happy to be here, Buffy. I'm glad you're here too. Welcome. Thank you very much. Nat is in the house. I'm here for the first time. We'll be seeing you in Mexico over the weekend. I've got a hug waiting for you. I can't wait to meet you in person. Such a thrill. Such a thrill I get from meeting people for the first time or second, third, fourth, fifth in person. Truly, Nana, I'll see you there. Safe travels to you. I leave tomorrow, six o'clock flight. Yolanda's in the house first time. Yolanda, welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, Nana said, how do I approach a potential restaurant owner for a possible wine river cruise? Why don't we start there right now? How do I approach a potential restaurant owner for a possible wine river cruise? Nana, here's exactly what I would do. And first, I'm going to tell you what I have known many, many, many agents to do before you that has not worked, with all due respect. Friends, you need to understand that as your business coach, I need to tell you stuff that you need to hear, but you don't necessarily want to hear. But whenever I give you constructive feedback, because sometimes it's beneficial to hear things that are not the best strategy, but there are better ways. I need to be honest with you. I need to tell you. So most agents, uh, Nana, in this case, would send an email to the owner, a long email. I have this great idea. We want to do this. We can take you here. And it's beautiful, wonderful, and terrific. And guess what the business owner does? Say it. Delete. Why? Because they're getting hit left and right, right and left, inside out, upside down with people trying to sell them their big idea. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So they don't even give you the time of day. They'll just say, no, thanks. It's another sales call, albeit good word. Look it up. A great idea. But it's your idea, Nana. It's your idea. Is everybody listening to what I'm saying? Because I bet you, you may have a restaurant in the area and you maybe adore that chef. You love their food. Maybe you have a, a, a wine shop owner or whatever, a yoga studio owner, a hula hoop owner, whatever. And you've got a big idea. Or you make a phone call and you say, I want to come in. I have this great idea I want to tell you about. Well, you're still trying to sell me something. So what I suggest you do, Nana, is um, you got to do your research on the person or the persons, the family, the couple, whatever, the man, the woman that owns the store that you want to talk to. Get to know who they are. Sam's in the house. Hello, Sam. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to startle you, Sam, but I just saw you pop in. I can't see you, but I see your name. I would do this. I would first do my research. Who are they? Did they just write a book? Have they written a, a recipe book? Uh, anything about their story that you find interesting to get to know them? Like make a little dossier. That I don't know how to spell. And then I would reach out and see if I have any friends or family, anybody that knows them. Anybody. Because the best way to get in the door is through a referral. Hi, uh, Miss Jones. You're the chef, you're the owner of this restaurant, and our mutual friend Mitch said, we need to talk. We need to meet. We need to connect. What, would you have 15 minutes for me? I frequent your restaurant all the time. My favorite are your, um, I don't know, your turkey meatballs in, the, in the, the basil cream sauce parentheses, parenthetically speaking, and can I buy you a cup of coffee? I'm a local business owner too. Now listen to what I'm saying now. You want to set up a 15-minute meeting. It's best to go in as a referral or at least a big fan, but if, 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 you, if you know those, if you can't do those because everyone's got fans, what you can say is, hey, I'm a local business owner too. I'd love to meet you. Now, what you need to do is make it about them. 
and then have your dossier ready and you walk in, shake the hand, don't give your card, ask for their card, wait till they ask you for you, your card and, and you're not selling anything on this first meeting, maybe even not the second meeting. I'm not done yet. Listen, everybody, I'm not done. Okay. And your mission there is to learn about them, is to make them feel great, take an interest in them, make friends. And subliminally, you want to find out what their biggest problem is. What's your biggest challenge, Ms. Johnson, running this restaurant? I don't know. I've got so many loyal customers. I wish I could meet them all, see them all, do something special for them. I'm so grateful to people like you, Nana, for coming here and eating my food, drinking my drinks. But I'm working so hard here. But I wish there was something I could do out of loyalty. So after that, your mission is to discover their problem because friends, you can't sell a group trip to anybody because it's your big idea and you're solving your need, your problem, because you want to make money. You got to solve their problem. Discover what their problem is. There is no group in the history of man or womankind that has not been a successful group without solving a problem. Every group solves a problem. Every group trip. And what you can do is, oh, it's 15 minutes, Ms. Johnson. I want to thank you very much for your time. And she might just say, sit, sit, sit. Tell me about you. Who are you? What do you do? And and, and you'll say, you know what? I, I, I have this kind of cool idea. Can, can we, can, can we schedule a second meeting and, and uh, let me buy you lunch and, you know, that kind of stuff. Take your time. You want to be passionately persistent, but you also want to be uh, approach it as a friend. You know, Dale Carnegie, read Dale Carnegie's book, How to Make Friends and Influence People. Okay. That's exactly not what I would do, how to approach a potential restaurant owner for a possible wine river cruise. Okay. You, you've got to get them to reveal the problem. First, you got to get them to let you in the door as non-threatening. Number two, figure out what their problem is and start a conversation about, hey, you have a great idea after. That's got to come later. And the idea solves their problem. Mitch says, GSSS2, great wisdom for those who have done it all. Thank you, Mitch. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm getting some incredible thank you notes from the suppliers and from the coaches who were there. But I have to reveal something to you. And this is the truth. It blows my mind. My friend, Vicki Freed and Lori Bond, they did the first kickoff keynote video. And it was great. They did it special just for you, just for the agent community. Hold on there. And I was talking to Vicki. I said, well, how many phone calls did you get? She goes, I don't think I got any. I, I look forward to getting some. Friends, Vicki gave out her phone number. <laughs> I don't understand. Why wouldn't you call her? Call her. Just call her. Come up with a question. Come up with a challenge. She is the most agent-friendly, agent-loving person I know next to me. But she's amazing. She's awesome. Would you call Vicki, please? Don't be intimidated. She's totally approachable. Karen says, I've made a commitment to attend a wine event every month in search of a group leader. I noticed lots of events at this local cheese shop. Is it crazy to consider combining a wine shop with this cheese shop that both owners bring guests? Question, how to pay them? Example, uh, uh, how much money per guest based on, uh, do you pay them based on how many guests they bring? So listen up, everybody. Pull up a chair, get closer, because Karen just hit on something so big, so wonderful, so beautiful. And that's the partnership. That's the collaboration. Why? partner with only one company, one person, one group leader, why not have a three-part partnership, a joint venture? And I think wine and cheese go right together. I think it's a brilliant idea. So let me take the first part of your question. Friends, there was a, one of the speakers, one of the keynote speakers in GSSS2, um, was giving, was it, was it, uh, oh my goodness gracious goodness, was it Trek travel or my goodness, I don't remember who, 
he or she said that, uh, you know, if, if you want to have this niche, you, let's say you, you want to do a yoga, you want to do a yoga group, but this is just an example. Don't limit uh, your efforts on finding a yoga instructor with a big following. No. Who, who else goes to the at yoga class? Uh, do those same people go to the smoothie shop? Do the same people uh, go to uh, belong to this gym? Do the same people do kickboxing? I don't, you know, look for peripheral, peripheral. Where do these same people who love yoga, what do they do? Where do they go? Where do they hang out? Sometimes we get so focused on, well, if I want to do a wine themed cruise, I need to find a the owner of the wine shop. I need to find the owner of the vineyard. Wrong. Why limit it just to that? Think about all the other businesses or people who have influence in that category, in that area. You're all of a sudden your mind's your head's gonna pop off your shoulders saying, Wow, why didn't I think of that? Listen to what Karen is saying. Yes, Karen, go to the cheese shop. And and wouldn't it be beautiful to find out, hey, the cheese people know the wine people. You got something I need. You got something I need. It's like chocolate and peanut butter. They go together really well. Which created the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Mm, one of my favorite snacks of all time. I think it's a beautiful thing. Now, let me answer part two. Listen up, everybody, especially for our new people here, our new boot campers. And for our guests who I invited at the last second, as part of our group sales success on the two Facebook group, Karen said, what do I pay them? What do I give them? Karen, you know the answer to this. Sam, you know the answer to this. Who, who, who are all my regulars here? Danny, you, Hans, you know. Jenny, come on. You all know. Judy, every, Lori, Linda. Everyone, oh, Martha, you're new at boot camp, but you probably know this already. Um, and so, oh my goodness, Ted's here, Scott's here. Listen, everybody, the big question on the table, what do I give them? What do I pay them? What do I offer the group leader, the wine store owner, the influencer? You don't. You don't offer them anything. You wait for them to tell you what they want. And it may be as forward as, okay, Karen, whiff them. What's in it for me? Well, here's my microphone, by the way. I have a very nice microphone. Look at that. It's beautiful. So when they say what's in it for me, you say, what do you want? Seriously, friends, don't commit. Okay, the number one biggest, most egregious, good word, look it up. Egregious mistake agents make is saying this, these words. Ask me how you can travel free. Oh, do this and you can go free. How'd you like to travel for whatever? Friends, as soon as you say, how'd you like to travel free, game over. You, you've lost all of your negotiating power because all they're going to focus on is traveling free. They're not necessarily going to be as focused on making the group successful, rolling up their sleeves, doing the heavy lifting to do the marketing, the influencing to make the group successful. Am I right? Of course I'm right. And what if, listen to me, what if they're wealthy? They don't need a free cat. They're very charitable and generous. I don't want a free cat. What if they represent an organization and they're not allowed to take it free? So here's what happens. If you offer them cash, if you offer them free travel up front without ever asking, then what if they say, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. That's nice of you. 
but what I really want is bum bum bum. Then you're on the hook for more than you ever wanted to give away. Karen, are we cool? Yeah, hearing what I'm saying? I know we all want to go in armed with answering the question, what's in it for me? You want to make it, we're, as salespeople, we want to make it so incredibly appealing that the group leader says, okay, I'll do it. Okay, no, 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 no. We have to A, make sure we're solving their problem, wait for them to ask what they want, what they need, and B, because you already know the possibilities. See, it's not as if you guys and girls don't know this. You know what free travel means and what that looks like. That's dangerous, those words, free. It ain't free, is it? Uh-uh. Okay, you, you already know, or at this point, you have no idea what your profit margin is going to be if you can afford to give away 50 bucks a head or $500 a head. You have no idea. And, and if they tell you, here's what I want, you'll say, okay, let me write this down. Talk to me. Tell me. Talk to me. Tell me. All right. So let me get this right. So here's the final note, everybody. When they tell you, here's what I want, and you're writing it down, taking copious notes, I'm using such good words today. Okay. You'll, you're going to look at them. They're going to say, so, Ms. Johnson, if I'm able to get you a, a, an upgrade to a veranda and a massage, because that's, that's what you need right now, but I can't get the fear right now. That's what you really want. Um, this would excite you and would be a great reward for helping make this group a big success. It, if I, if I can get this for you, and they're going to say yes, and understand, final, this is the final note. Nothing is a gimme. Do you guys and girls know what the gimme is? The gimme is guaranteed up front. Now, when's the last supplier or cruise line or brand that says, tell you what, we're going to give you the TC guaranteed up front? Eh, I don't think that's happened in a long time. So why on earth would you? My beautiful people, my beautiful travel entrepreneurs, why on earth would you guarantee something up front? Don't do it. It's got, you've got to build an earned incentive. Think of a, a company, any company that has a sales staff that has an incentive. They never say, here's the five grand up front, go sell. Never. If you hit this sales goal, you get a grand. This sales go, you get two grand. And then if you hit the stretch go, if you sell this much, you get your five grand. You see what I'm saying? Are you seeing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? But we said because of GSSS2, I've changed my business model to groups. Crazy. No, Buffy, that ain't so crazy. That's awesome. That's amazing. This makes my day. Groups is the way to go. Groups will keep you obsolete proof. What does that mean? Obsolete proof? Why? And I've been, I've been saying this for years. That's why I chose to, in the travel category, to focus, to build group boot camp, because I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, mastering the group business will keep you obsolete proof, meaning you'll never go out of business if you know how to master groups, because consumers cannot do the groups themselves. It's a failure. The dot-coms can't do groups. That's a failure. The suppliers direct can't do groups. That's a failure. Now, how do I define a failure? I define a failure when people come back saying, woulda, coulda, shoulda. I missed. I didn't know. I wish we had. That's what a failure is. People come back. Keyword begins with a D. Next letter, I. Next letter, S. Next letter, S. People come back disappointed. A group is a failure when people come back disappointed. And because they got you on the case, they've hired you, keyword, hired you, hired you to take control, TC, take control. You're not going to let them miss a thing. Man, I'm on a roll here. Not just a Kaiser roll. So I was just in New York visiting family. <coughs> you know? And, uh, Back in New York, where I'm from, I live in Memphis, Tennessee now. They got the best bagels in the world. I had a bagel every single day with the whitefish salad, 
with bacon and eggs. Oh my gosh, I'm just reminiscing. Pardon me, I'm about to go to the next question. Mm. If you are courageous enough and you want your microphone tone turned on, let me know, please. I will do it so we can all hear your voice, ask your question, and then I'll put you back on mute. But I need to know. I can't unmute you unless you want to be unmuted. Martha says, kicking off Travel Club with former high school teacher and her fellowship group in May. Martha, this is awesome. She's kicking off a Travel Club with a former high school teacher and her fellowship group in May. So two key areas of opportunity, teachers and fellowship. Martha, knock it out of the park. It's great. Build that community. Position yourself. Listen, everybody, because this is what Martha has to do to be successful. She is going to position herself as the celebrity authority, as the key influencer in that group when it comes to travel tourism groups. She's not going to sell. She's not going to be hard sale. She's not going to be a used car salesperson. She's going to be the authority the most knowledgeable. She's always going to stay a step ahead and know more than everybody else and be the resource because then people will trust you enough, Martha, when they say, Martha, would you help us put this group together? It's a great idea. All right, hang on here. I want to read this. Uh, oh, Scott, who's a boot camp member. So here's an opportunity. One of our speakers, Teddy, you'll remember Teddy Burris. He's the LinkedIn expert. I met him through a friend, through a friend, through a friend, and now we're friends, and he was in GSSS1, brought him back for GSSS2. And so Teddy does LinkedIn training. So I just want you to know that Scott, one of our boot camp members, Scott, wants to take his training, but it's it's if you do it direct with him, like my boot camp is $800, okay? With, with Teddy to get the training, it's about $500. But what Teddy does is if he gets 12 agents, it, he's offering a group training rate. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. A group training rate, it's about uh, 162 bucks per agent. So you do it as a group, which is brilliant. So if anyone has interest in signing up for LinkedIn training, which I think you should, you need to, I should too, but I think too many agents don't know how to leverage LinkedIn. It's mainly Facebook that most agents use, I think. Um, would you let me know and I'll connect you to Scott. So you guys deal with it, talk about it, make it happen. Uh, also, uh, the Travel Institute, and this is leading me to a, a question I got from Mitch, my friend Mitch, the pun king. Mitch, I like to think of myself as the pun king, but I don't know, Mitch. If we had a pun contest, who would be the punniest? I don't know. So the Travel Institute has a, a webinar on CRM called Understanding the Basics. CRM, what does CRM mean? Customer Relationship Management. So check it out, Travel Institute. Just want to let you know because that's an area of high need, big need. Why? Here's why. In Mitch's words, Mitch, Stuart, here's a question that you and I have discussed many times before. We have learned that what the, the what and why of groups, I would like more of the how, especially how to manage, record, and track the flow of a group from creation of the group to booking each participant to pre-travel, on travel, and post-travel. And Mitch is suggesting the system, what system to use to manage the flow. Uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch says <clears throat> a spreadsheet is not a system. Client base as a CRM is clumsy at best. What tools can you recommend to discuss to help us stay on course? So here's the thing. We, we can talk about this for hours. We don't have hours. This is a, a, a one hour coaching show and we've got half hour left. See, I told you time flies when you're having fun. And I promise you, I'm going to get to everything here. I promise. So here's the deal. Uh, here's what I, here's what I want to say to mention to all of you. First of all, have any of you? I need you to type it in. I may not see it till a little later as I get through all the questions. Have any of you found a system, as Mitch suggests, a system? I would say either a software or an application. And when I say software, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be 
uh, uh, software per se that you have to download. It could be an app, an online app. Like I know client ease is strictly online. You don't need to download anything. You can access it, utilize it from anywhere. The information is stored either in their de in their systems or in the cloud. Uh, client base, I think, is different. Uh, but but you know, there's also stuff like Mailchimp and uh, Constant Contact, uh, which are more CRM database management, not necessarily helping you manage your business. So do you need two systems? Do you need a, a customer relationship match CRM system? Like I use MailChimp, do you need that? And do you need a an actual group management system? Now, I know that many of the travel, uh, decidedly travel, the purpose-built systems like TravelJoy, okay, uh, they, they are built to also be your CRM to be able to deploy emails for you. They have a database. So when you go that route, if I'm not mistaken, it's like two in one. It becomes your tool for managing the group process, managing the group bookings, and also doing email deployment. And so if you use uh, a, a system like AWeber, MailChimp, or Constant Contact, that's strictly going to be for email distribution, which is critical and important, which you may need for other applications. OK, but it's, it's not it's not the holy grail. It won't do everything for you. That's another thing I want to offer to you that I know some host agencies provide some kind of tool for this. And that may come from your consortia. Maybe it's coming from Nexion or your host. Maybe it's coming from Travel Leaders Network. Maybe it's coming from uh, Travel Savers and Nest. Maybe it's coming from Cruise Planners. Maybe it's coming from Dream Vacations. They have systems purpose built to help you manage groups. Now, I'm not here to attest which is better, which is the best, which is clumsy, this kind of stuff. I don't know. I'm not using it every day. So wh what am I saying? I'm saying that you need to decide to decide. You need to roll up your sleeves, do your homework, look at all your variables, see what's going to fit your business best. And perhaps we should have an hour focused on, I, I should do a survey. You want me to do a survey of everybody in Group Sales Success Summit because there's 3,000 agents who've signed up. Let's find out. We may be surprised to find out that more people than not use use travel drive. I don't know. But they also use Travify. Did you see David? David Chide, he's the co-founder of Travify. Now that's not CRM necessarily, but that helps you build magnificent itineraries and brochures. It's a great sales tool. It's a great management tool, but it doesn't do everything for you. You tell me, how can I bring this information to you? Definitely attend that webinar that the Travel Institute is doing. OK, and tell me what I can uncover for you, friends. I, I'm, you know, listen, if this was a whiskey tasting thing, tell me which it's I'm going to tell you what you know, I'll do a tasting, but you may not agree with me. You know, right. But that would be fun to get a whiskey flight. But your taste buds are different. Your needs may be different than mine, friends. This is a very personal endeavor to discover which system is better. Nobody's going to come to you and say this is the best. It may be the best for you. Uh, Angela, but not you, Bobby. Tell me what you're using. I'll compile a list. I am more than happy to do this research, to collect this data and share it back, to tell you who's happiest with what systems so you can use it. Because, friends, if you don't have a reliable system, Mitch, to your point, you can't function in this business. Now, if you noticed in GSSS2, I did, when I interviewed the successful agents as we celebrated their success, some, like Wendy, she, she, she actually produced that video from a river cruise ship. Uh, and uh, uh, where were they? On the, um, I forget which river they were on. Doro? I don't remember. In any case, it was a charter. They chartered a ship. Holly, she did a partial ship charter joint venture with another travel professional, she can't wait to do her first full ship charter. I did a partial ship charter on that, I'm a Christina. So exciting. These seas are achievable, they're doable, they're valuable, and they're profitable. But the only way to manage it, to handle it, is if you have a system. You gotta, you gotta put all your work aside and investigate. If you need me to bring forward all the optional systems, I'm happy to do that. Maybe I can negotiate a deal, I don't know. I don't like to make that promise to you, but I'll try. 
I know Travel Joy, he gave a limited time offer. There's one final thing I want to say, Mitch, to your point. When you said Excel is not a system, I get it. So, friends, I, this is my, my – I'm going to check the boards to see what you're all saying about this. But when it comes to Excel, are any of you using Excel? I use Excel almost religiously. I use it for mail merges. I use it to print my invoices. I use it to, uh, to maintain um, my MailChimp list. I use it to maintain – uh, my group boot camp memberships information, but you need to be good at it. You need to be good at it to use it and understand how it works. So you do imports and exports and, and, and how to print and merge and all this kind of stuff. I get it. But then again, if you're using another system, you may have to learn that too. So I think, friends, Excel can be a very critical part of your system. And how do I say that? I used Excel for my river cruise to manage all the business because I mean I, I'm not a travel professional I don't do groups this was just a friends and family thing that I challenged myself I teach it I'm gonna do it if I can talk the talk I better walk the walk I used Excel in boot camp friends you know this I'm a boot camp I have an Excel spreadsheet that has the math built in I built for you to use to price out because remember in boot camp I teach you to net down net it down get out the commission so everything is, is is at the most basic net level and then mark it up and then mark it up why don't be a commission hostage because you're going to add in you're going to create a package right so excel is critical and it can be used to tremendous degrees or just used strictly for math let's say but here's the other thing so many of the super successful agents we celebrated in GSSS2 and one, Jennifer Donches. I remember specifically her biggest takeaway, her biggest message to you was use Excel. She uses Excel for everything, everything. It's critical. So Mitch, while it's not necessarily a system, it can be a, an important part of the system and part of the workflow. In fact, Excel could be your core your database. It could be the core, the whole heart, the heart of your operation, and it feeds into other places. It feeds into CRM like Aweber, Manship, Cosmic Contact, whatever. It feeds into uh, your, your booking software that you're, that you're using with your host or, or with your consortia, okay? So let me stop yapping here, and let me see what we got talking about here. Mitch says, may I have a cup of coffee too? Le Monde is the French press. Uh, you, absolutely, Mitch. Pull up a chair. We got to have coffee together one day, don't you think? Um, Jenny said, still waiting for your live conference in Memphis. I hear you, Jenny. So I, I'm just going to let you guys and girls know right now. Oh, no, maybe I shouldn't tell you because it's not a definite. But, you know, sometimes when you put, put things out there, they manifest. They happen. So Memphis is, is not going to happen this year. There's no way. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm so blessed to have so many speaking gigs that you have can't come in. I just can't do it. I, I, I really I just don't think I can. Right. So what I would do here in Memphis is a, a conference for uh, people who are uh, like a mastermind, people who are already in, in boot camp. They can come too. But I'm looking to do a conference um away someplace else not necessarily memphis uh because i already have some hotels who are interested in hosting a conference but this would be if you're not in boot camp at all but you want to join so you pay one fee that uh so you know boot camp is 800 dollars. you pay the 800 dollars, but there's extra there's more so it's not going to be cheap but you're not only getting full access to boot camp and be a member but you also get a sort of this this small intimate mastermind group um you know that's part of the whole process too and that would be for people who want to join boot camp you pay this one price you get boot camp but you, you get more too it's going to be fair to everybody i i, I can't re i can't tell you about the name of the hotel just yet because ain't nothing's been written down yet but jenny to your point i promise we're going to do something in memphis maybe we'll do it in the spring of uh, uh i'll let you know I, i'm pro i'm going to israel in april so i'm going to do it i got to do it earlier you know what i'm saying Karen says, good news this week. I have an appointment with an owner of an Italian restaurant next week for a potential trip to Tuscany. Karen, rock and roll. Go do it. Uncover the problem. Make friends. Karen, best of luck. Remember to report back. Uh, Scott is in the house. Just being a fly on the wall. Scott, I'm glad you're here. Appreciate you being a fly on the wall. And Mitch, 
uh, appreciate your friendship too. Mitch spelled dossier for me. Mitch, I don't know. What would I do without you? D-O-S-S-I-E-R. Uh, Mitch said, in quotes, and here's what Mitch said. So I'm going through this here. Stick with me, everybody. I am a fan of your food, and I expect you have a lot of fans. As you know, I'm in the travel business. I'd love to visit with you and learn if it would be uh, interested in uh, treating your, your loyal customers to an extraordinary experience. Can I buy a cup of coffee next week? So this is what Mitch did, Mitch. This is what you would say to get in the door of that restaurant owner um, and uh, to start, set up that, that meeting. I call it a 15-minute meeting. Now, Mitch is specifically saying in his note that um, – as you know, I'm in the travel business. I would love to visit with you and learn if you'd be interested in treating yourself, treating your loyal customers to an extraordinary experience. So that's bold. Remember, once you make that suggestion, you're, you're telling your purpose. Your purpose is to sell them on your idea. You have an idea and you're giving them a chance to reject you. You're giving them a chance to say, no, thank you. And if you didn't say that, if you just say, I'm a big fan of your food, as you know, I'm in the travel business, a local business owner is you, can I buy you a cup of coffee? So if you take out that middle sentence, this is my two cents, friends. I don't think you're being unscrupulous, you're lying, but your true heart and head purpose need to be to meet this person and make friends before you try giving them your big idea and selling them something, because I think you're giving them an immediate chance to say no, just saying, just saying. Buffy said, oh, we got a lot of comments coming in. My biggest fear is dealing with vendors. Really? So I want to give you something real quick here, Buffy, about dealing with vendors, meeting the suppliers. Um, I think one of the most critical things is you need to be very comfortable with your preferred suppliers, your preferred brands. I like to say brands better because we never want to slip when we're talking to customers and use the word preferred or supplier. Once they hear the word preferred, friends, just so you know, they're going to think, oh, you're on the take. You're going to earn more. So you're going to bring, you're going to sell me on a product that you love best. No, you got to make sure you're offering <clears throat> a product that you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is best for them. Of course, you want to stick within your love circle of your preferred brands. I know that. I get that. The brands you know, the brands you trust, the brands who have the most uh, opportunity uh, commission structures, the brands who also have uh, the best BDMs, the best sales force, they're the most successful. So, Buffy, the first thing I'm going to recommend and suggest to you is you need to make friends with these vendors, these suppliers. Uh, if you get called on by a local rep and, and you, you think you want to get you do business with them, form a, a deeper relationship, give them your business – Offer you offer to take them out for a meal. I mean, I was a DSM and a BDM for years and years and years. One time, one time, I remember it in New Jersey, a travel entrepreneur said, I want to take you to lunch. I, I, it was amazing. And we became very good friends and we did a lot of business together. I made him a lot of money. And you know what? He made me a lot of money. So the first thing, Buffy, is make a list of those suppliers who fit in your love circle. What's your love circle? We talked about this in GSSS2, one of my intention tips. Did you read my intention tips? Which is based on the type of people you want to work with, the type of products you want to sell, the niche, 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 niche you want to be in, what suppliers, what brands are in that love circle. Get to know them, form a deeper relationship, be friends, because when you have somebody you can rely on and count on, they'll take the fear factor away. Truly, they're not out to get you. They may not be considered your true partner, okay? But they're here. They make their success is your success. Your success is their success. There has to be a collaborative effort. You need to be feel good about. You need to feel good about each other. The people, the policies, and that's how you pick them. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let me think here. Uh, Mitch said, negotiate for a fair exchange. A bargain is a balance of benefits for all parties. Emphasize their benefits for an inspire uh, for inspiring a group through. So we're going back now to what do you do with that group leader? To Karen's point, what do you what do you offer them? You negotiate a fair exchange. A bargain is a balance of benefits for all parties. A balance of benefits. That's a great phrase, Mitch. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Judy said, I'm doing a presentation to a group of senior center coordinators in a few weeks. 
I do know that the centers, not the coordinators, want some type of reimbursement for those centers. How do I handle this? I have the opportunity to offer a savings, to offer savings, but plan on using this to give back to the center rather than to the travelers you're dividing. So <clears throat> Judy has this exact same opportunity that she knows that they want some type of reimbursement. How do you handle that? So I would ask them how they've done it in the past, Judy. Did you do any kind of events, any kind of groups, any kind of travel or any kind of event? How do they define reimbursement? So don't reinvent the wheel if you don't need to. See what they say. See what they offer. They may already have the solution. Number one. Number two, is it something that needs to be revealed to the guests? Is it something that needs to be revealed to the guests? You need to find that out too, because if it is, it needs to be put front and center. If not, then of course you need to paper this up. And there's a level of risk involved here, and that's why a group agreement letter is so critical. Friends, one of the most important things we teach in group boot camp is never, ever, 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 ever have I made my point. Do a group without a written group agreement letter, especially when there's an exchange of money when there's a reimbursement, when there's a kickback, when there's a payout, when there's an earnings, like an incentive. How much are you going to earn? When are you going to earn it? How is it paid? When is it paid? You never want to pay it up front. You want to pay it after the group departure because what if there's a cancellation and you miss a TC level? I've heard this happen numerous times. You pay out before because they want it before. You said, sure. But then push comes to shove, people cancel, you miss it. Oh, my goodness. No, they have to wait if you have to do a partial. So the number one thing, Judy, is I would ask them, have you done it in the past? What does that look like? What is reimbursement? Okay. All right. You need to understand that. And number two, you need to paper it up. And you need to make sure you're still going to make money. And if you're not going to pass the savings on to the consumer, it's going to go back to them. Just make sure this is all going to work. Because if the price point ends up being too high, nobody makes any money. The price point has to be fair and reasonable. This is going to map back to Mitch's point, right? And the other part of the equation is remember, friends, never be selling. And this is something I teach in boot camp ad nauseum in a good way, in a beautiful way. You never want in groups. You will. I'm going to make a bold statement. You will not be successful. In the group business, if you sell the, Scott, you know what I'm about to say, Sam, you know what I'm about to say, Sessie, you know what I'm about to say, Jenny, you know what I'm about to say, if you sell the bare bone strip down off the shelf product, you will never be successful in the business if you sell a bare bone strip down off the shelf product. Because then why on earth would a consumer need you? They'll go book it themselves. You need to create a package. Not an all-inclusive package, a more inclusive package. Judy, tell me if that helped you. I hope it helped. I, you know, I think so, sometimes, friends, we reach out and, and you want an answer from me, and I'm giving you a direct answer, but you're like, no, can you give me more substantive? I'm not the person you're negotiating with, so I can't tell you. What I can tell you is in the, how the negotiating process works in sales in general. You know the cards that you have to play, but you never show them. Kenny Rogers, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Walk away if they're too greedy. Walk away if you're not going to make money. Walk away if it's not win, 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 because both of your mission statements need to be aligned. You both, number one mission needs to be a successful group. Number two, they get what they want. You get what you want. But number one is a successful group. I hope that helps. Let me know. Scott says to it, I'm really niching down and heading toward culinary horticulture, active wellness. Cool. You know what that spells? Chow. C-H-A-W. Culinary horticulture, active wellness. Do advise writing a business plan to really help you define and stay focused. Hundred thousand percent, friends. May GSSS2 and GSSS1 inspire you to pick that niche, to embrace it, and to go to town, hit a home run, because you will, and you need to write a business plan. You need to write a business plan because you need to 
focus, you need to target, you need to hone, and all of your marketing, all of your, what I call your uh, touch points, wherever a consumer sees you online, in person, in writing, okay, uh, here, uh, these are my postcards, by the way, you can think big, I will help you do big, everything you produce, every touch point needs to be branded consistently, you can't, if I go to your website, after you tell me that you're a culinary specialist and you do culinary tours, and I go to your website and it's screaming deals and discounts and cruise this and blah, 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 and all the clues, whatever. I, I'm going to think you're a phony baloney because you're not true to your words. So what comes out of your mouth needs to come out of your website, needs to come out of your business card. And man, your business card needs to be simple, clear, concise, very simple, because all people need your business card is for your name and how to contact you and my professional opinion. So Scott, good luck with that. I think it's great because there's a lot of overlay, culinary horticulture, active wellness. There's a lot of overlay there, overlap there. And write that business plan, right? Roll up your sleeves and write the plan. Who, who, you know, who are your best clients? Where are you going to go to find them? Where do they hang out? Um, I do actually, I get hired a lot to do. I have a webinar on uh, creating the, the, it's, I call it the most successful business plan ever written because it's simple. You don't need a, a, a master's uh, to uh, write this business plan. It's simple stuff. You know, the basics. Who are you? What do you look like? Who, who's your best client? What do they look like? Where do they hang out? That kind of stuff. The basics. Ramona says, hi, Stuart. I'm interested in LinkedIn training with Teddy. Okay, Ramona. I'm going to mark that down. Hold on. Ramona. Gotcha. Thanks, Ramona. I'll follow up with you. Mitch said the pun fest is on. Yeah, we, how, that would be funny having a pun fest. Maybe maybe there's a group around that. Would be the punniest group trip around. Sessie, I would like more information on LinkedIn training. Sessie, you got it. Okay, wow, I'm running behind here. Scott said, I'm looking at companies right now, uh, Pipe Drive, uh, Travel Joy, and a a Ammo CRM. So these are other CRM companies Scott's looking into, Pipe Drive. So, you know, there's other CRMs that have a built in funnel system, you know, for leads. I mean, there's so many ways to go here. Travel Joy and, uh, and Ammo CRM. I've never heard of that. Interesting. A M O C R M. Mitch says, Survey is a great idea. Thank you. Remember that groups have different requirements than in individual bookings. Absolutely. So we're talking about the CRM situation. Yeah, you could find a system that's great for individuals, but lousy for groups. That's important. What are you using now that's using for individuals, but it's lousy for groups? Let me know. I'll give the warning to everybody else. Take a look, but it may not be good for groups too. Uh, Linda says, through Cruises Inc., we use Sprout Loud. S P R O U T L O U D. Sprout Loud. They're moving away from that though and going to another system. They're also starting with Travify. So that's Linda. Hi, Linda, with uh, Cruises Inc., which is also a Dream Vacations Cruise One. So it's currently Sprout Loud and, and starting a relationship with Travify. I think Travify is really cool. And David was in the summit. If you haven't seen it, you got to see his presentation. I hope you bought GSSS2, friends. If not, or I still have a, if you want, I'll give you the coupon code to buy it for $99. Oh my gosh, it's a 10 day conference for $99. Hello. Uh, okay, Karen said doing a survey uh, would be helpful. Okay, Linda said, anyone know anything about Hootsuite? That's what my host agency is moving to. Anybody? Hootsuite, H O O 2, it's fun to say. Hootsuite. Uh, Linda says she uses Excel. Bobby says uh, she, uh, uh, she, I have used Access along with Excel. So, Bobby, it sounds like that's a program. Access, A C C E S S, Access. I don't know Access. Anybody else use Access? Interesting. I'm going to go back and read all these notes and I'm going to understand what everybody's talking about. Gazelle is here. Hello. Thanks for allowing the purchase of GSSS2. You got it. Thank you. I know you're an owner. Thank you very much. I'm so grateful. May it inspire you for days and months and years to come. This stuff never goes out of style. I've been in touch with a few speakers. Air consolidation. My friend Bill Gardner from Downtown Travel. Listen, and I know if you got people coming in from a million locations, it might not work. But what if you have enough people coming in from one? You can do air. You can take more control. You can make a couple of bucks. I've been in touch with a few speakers, Air Consolidation. Thanks a bunch, Stuart. Glad to join your platform this morning, Gazelle. I am so happy you're here. Thank you so very much. Hope to meet you in person one day soon. 
Uh, Karen says, Buffy needs to invite the BADMs for coffee at works. There you go. See, Buffy? Get to know your business development manager. And you know what? If you don't have a local person, get on a horn and get on the phone because some, sometimes the cruise lines, the hotel companies will offer, you'll be assigned a representative at headquarters. Same deal. Same deal. Have a meeting over coffee. You have coffee, they have coffee. You may be 300 miles away, but you're still meeting. Nancy said, hey, Nancy's in the house. Hey, Stuart, sorry I'm late. Been busy making connections with my circle of lovers. I love it. I love the way you talk about it, Nancy, because that's what it is. It's your love circle. Circle of lovers. We can go places with that, but I understand what you're talking. It's a beautiful thing. Love is a beautiful thing, isn't it? When you feel it, when you share it, when you do your business with a selfless intention, selfless intention, great things happen. It's the law of attraction. It's the law of attraction. Karen says, Judy might be able to get some co-op dollars from a supplier that brings and brings suppliers with her. Absolutely, friends, especially you, Buffy, if you're not leveraging your brand representative and get that call. There's money to be had. There's no reason why you need to pay for everything 100%. At the very least, get 50%, right? I, I actually, I teach that. That's one of the modules in boot camp, how to get that co-op. Because I was the guy giving out the co-op as a BDM, and I was their manager approving or disapproving the co-op. Judy said, yes, thank you. Good stuff. This is just to introduce myself, and one of the centers knows me uh, knows me well from travel I have done for them. I think, Judy, when you go to that senior center, this is you're going to play detective. You're going to learn everything you can about their past. And if they've never done it before, you need to know what the obstacles are, you know, what you need to navigate through and around, what you can and cannot do. Solve their problem. You can make it work. And wouldn't it be nice if the money they want to get, the reimbursement, goes back to the center Buying a card table, buying a bench, it's it's like a fundraiser. And then all the people who go on it, a couple of bucks ends up going to build a beautiful bench, whatever it is. John, hey, John, I got pulled into a meeting by chance. Will this be re recording to be uh, uh, available later? Yes, it will. Welcome, John. I record everything I do. Absolutely. Martha said SBA.org has a small business plan template that is super easy. There you go. Scott, you asked about a business plan. If not building your own or building what I recommend, doesn't make a difference. SBA, smallbizassociation.org. Rock and roll. Nancy said, made Portuguese kale soup to serve to the most, most of the 10 ladies that are coming with me to Portugal. For women, for women walking and wine adventure, the end of May. I know all of them, but they don't know each other. So Nancy's making Portuguese kale soup to serve to the then ladies that are coming with me to Portugal. There you go. Listen to what Nancy's doing. Hold on. This is driving me crazy. You know, you open up the window, and guess who shows up? The neighbor with the darn machines that make so much noise. we got a minute and a half left. Uh, listen, I did, when I was a... DSM with Costa Cruises in New Jersey. I We had a group event in their agency. I went out and I bought an electric burner and I made pasta with sauce, Alfredo sauce. I, I made, no, Nancy, I'm right there with you. I think it's a brilliant idea. What could you do that's different? Uh, Sam said, me too, LinkedIn. Okay, Sam, uh, for that Teddy Burris LinkedIn situation. Uh, Karen said, Hootsuite is simply a tool to automate your broadcast emails. To automate your broadcast emails. There you go, Hootsuite. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Karen said, I miss a summit is in Hawaii. Guess I need to buy it. Karen, you're a member of boot camp, aren't you? If you're a member of boot camp, you get it. It's part of the membership benefit package. And Karen says, BDMs, anytime there's a new BDM in town, I invite them to coffee. They invite several of their independent contractors in this area. There you go. Rock and roll. Take them out. They'll be shocked. And my guess is they'll pick up the bill anyway. All right. We have 20 seconds left. 20 seconds left. Do you have any final notes, any final questions before I dismiss you? You're not dismissed yet. Stick around. Mitch said should brand this Stewart's Power Hour. Great stuff. Thanks for the shout outs and looking forward to coffee and punch for a long time. You bet it, my friend. You bet, my friend. I appreciate that. Maybe I should read instead of the S Stewart Hour, Stewart's Power Hour. I like it. I like the ring for that. It is time. Uh, it is time. And ladies and gentlemen, I respect your time. So we're done. Class dismissed. Glad you're here.